Although it's long, although nakakatakot, if mag revalid ako yung you're watching this, nakakatakot na ka ba? And no matter how hard you prepared for it, or how you did not prepare for it that well, if you watch the part 2 and part 3 no oral revalid the series ko that I posted, you would really see how much I did not expect kung ano yung mga nakuha ko, but God provided! The Holy Spirit really just enlightened me all throughout. So I'm sure it can also happen to you. And more than the help that I try to give through this video, and dami, I'm sure you get a lot of help from upper batches, from your batchmates. Use that and motivate yourself hanggat may ilang araw pa kayo niyan, guys. Study to your best and practice and pray. I would also attach here a link to the flow that I used in my Repalada para masundan nyo rin siya while you're practicing on how to present your clinical case. Last minute ko lang ginawa tong vlog na narealize ko lapit na ng Repalada season. Hopefully it helps. <laughs> Come on. Hi guys, it's Mads Abraham and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If it's your first time in my channel, I am now, through God's grace, a licensed physician and I make videos giving med school tips, even pharmacy tips and other videos. So in this video, we'll be talking about how to present your clinical case na parang oral revalida style. Hopefully, helpful din siya for other med students no matter what year you're in. Because in this video, I'll only give specific tips on how I presented my clinical case during my oral revalida. So this Lang, my way of presenting a case is definitely not the best. And it is just my personal way. So it's up to you kung gusto sundin, if you want to modify it, or even if you find some things to improve on, you can just comment down here below para ako din, I can work on it and improve on my way of presenting my case. So I just want to give credit and say thanks to all my professors sa USD Med, also my friends, also my classmates, mga kagroup sa di ko kasi I wouldn't have learned how to present the cases this way if it weren't for you guys. I think what's important naman is that we always learn from our mistakes and we just always keep improving. Kayo din kayo madown if at some point napagalita na kayo or nagisa na kayo kasi I've been there. I think part of our med school journey na talaga magigisa tayo at some point in our lives. Besides, it's part of the way to become a better doctor talaga for our patients Aww. in the long run. Also take note, hindi ko i-include here kung paano yung tamang way na pag-take ng history or pag-perform ng PE. It's really just about how you present the case after mag Gawin na yung history and PE. So to somewhat make this video easier to understand, I will be including here kung ano yung mismo nakuha kong case in my RR Revalida, which was chronic superative otitis media with cholesteatoma, left, mastoiditis bilateral, allergic rhinitis med intermittent, and obese class 2. But I won't discuss it in detail, just basically ito lang yung guide natin. So let's start! First, we talk about presenting the history part. Just present all the parts from the general data up to the personal and social history na pinakadulo. If you're presenting this sa oral revalida, you have to make it very brief kasi limited yung time. The heart of the entire patient history is your history of present illness. Don't forget to start with the terms previously well until 2 months prior to admission or 2 months prior to consult. Our patient is a known diabetic or kung hypertensive, a known hypertensive kung asthmatic, a known asthmatic. Because this may already be relevant to the HPI. So you can start your HPI with those statements. Next, important dito yung chronology. An important dito yung pag-include ng interval history. And then after that, dapat ma-mention mo in your HPI kung ano yung pinaka-main symptom or presentation ng patient just minutes or hours before siya mag-consult. So kunyari, nag-start ka sa 2 months prior sa chronology mo. And then interval history, what happened the 1 month up to the 1 day before. And then, kunyari, sa chief complaint na ear pain, as in my case, pwede mo sabihin na 1 day prior, there was worsening of the ear pain initially Actually, 5, now naging 8 out of 10, hence consult. So, I believe na it's very important for you to establish at the end of HPI kung ano yung ikinalala ng case niya, bakit nag-decide siya na kailangan ko na talagang pumunta at magpatingin sa doktor. Please remember to always include the old cards per symptom. Hindi lang in old cards yung chief complaint. Yung sa case ko, meron siyang ear pain in old cards ko yun. Pero, dahil din meron siyang watery nasal discharge, ba may allergic rhinitis siya, in old cards ko rin yun. Kailangan ko natin yung character, yung discharge, and aggravating factors. 
just like exposure to allergens and so on. So again, hindi lang yung chief complaint. So for the other parts naman of this, right, I won't say it in detail kasi depende rin talaga to sa case na makuha nyo. Very important lang na you always, always mention kung ano yung pertinent. Both positive and negative pag nag-present na kayo ng case. Like kunyari, sa review of systems or ROS, if wala namang positive dun sa system, you can just say unremarkable or non-contributory. However, it really helps when you present na ma-identify nyo kung ano yung pertinent negatives. For example, dun sa case ko, nagkaroon na siya ng frequent ear pains before. My case was the case of Titus Media. Ang maging pertinent negative dito na ma-mention ko, when I already present my case, wala siyang history ng swimming or frequent manipulation ng ear. So that can be a point to suggest otitis externa. Dapat natanong ko and masabi ko sa case, pag present ko, kung ano rin yung wala yung patient na makakatulong sana sa atin na in-narrow down yung diagnosis natin. For me, this is one of the hardest parts eh. So dami ng sakit na inaaral natin. Ang hirap naman, identify ko ano yung dapat i-rule out. And another thing is that in presenting your case, dapat na-integrate mo lahat. Pag pinapresent ko na yung other parts ng history, like yung personal and social history, dapat at the back of my mind, naalala ko na yung occupation niya, isa siyang jeepney driver. So, matatanong ko rin at ma-present ko rin dun sa personal social history na meron siyang environmental exposure and other things that might just be related depending sa profession or sa other characteristics ng patient. Next would be the physical examination. Siyempre, hindi na natin isa-isahin per system. But, ang kailangan yung ma-mention when you present, yun lang focused systems or yung systems lang na related sa case nyo. By default, siyempre, ito yung tatlo na laging kasama. General survey, vital signs, and your anthropometrics. Whatever presentation, lagi dapat meron tong tatlo. And the rest, yung focus systems, depende na sa complaint or sa possible differentials mo. Pag nakuha nyo yung height and weight doon, you have to get the BMI. And you have to present that. Since ENT yung case ko. Ang present ko mainly tatlo and then the ENTPE. Pulmonary PE kasi nag-present siya with cold so I want to rule out also both upper and lower respiratory tract involvement. Then sa neuro PE, since our patient had a possible chronic otitis media, it may lead to complications sa pwedeng involved na nervous system. Also, my advice is that when you present, dapat ini-interpret mo na yung PE findings there sa harap ng doctors or ng panelists mo. You can already say, our patient is tachycardic at 115 beats per minute, tachypnic at 25 cycles per minute. Kasi, in-expect nila na pag pre-nasend mo na yung case, na-synthesize mo na kung ano yung ibig sabihin ng mga na-elicit mo from the patient. Now, let's move on to the salient features or the problem statement. Siyempre, dapat ma-identify natin both yung pertinent positive and pertinent negative for both the history and physical exam. Bakit ko sinama yung problem statement? I really like using this in med school and also in my own review. Valid, ah. Kasi you just compress all the salient features into about one to two sentences. Sinummarize na lahat ng important. So in the sample case which I gave, we can use this problem statement. We have a 28-year-old male GP driver presented with a one-year history of an on and off left ear pain with yellowish discharge, hearing loss on the left, accompanied by frequent sneezing, and watery nasal discharge on allergen exposure, both of which should not affect his daily activities. P findings were a perforated tympanic membrane with yellowish discharge and a white debris on the attic tenderness on the posterior auricular area of both sides, pale, boggy nasal turbinates, a BMI of 31, and no neurological deficits. So basically, yung in-include ko sa problem statement ko is everything that can potentially help me come up with my working diagnosis. With that, my clinical impression as of this point is chronic otitis media on the left ear. So take note, sinabi ko lang muna clinical impression. That's because after I discuss my differentials, dun ko pag gusto sabihin kung ano yung working diagnosis ko na complete for the patient. We now move on to the differential diagnosis. You can pick three here. Four is also possible kung nahihirapan ka magbawas. Huli nyo lagi sa differentials nyo kung ano yung impression nyo or ano yung diagnosis nyo. So, ang format ko parate when presenting my differentials would be DEP. Definition, Epidemiology, and Presentation. Give a brief definition for each. Epidemiology in terms of gender predilection, age predilection, nung sakit na yun. Included na rin dito yung risk factor. So, kunyari, family history ng atopy. Kaya siya 
merong allergic rhinitis. And lastly, dun sa mnemonic is P, which is presentation, which includes the history and the physical exam. Para madali na lang explain why you should rule it in or you should rule it out. Mas madaling justify yung diagnosis mo. You have to do it briefly, mga one sentence lang for each part, for each diagnosis. Then of course, never forget to always go back to your case, always related to your patient. To always use the phrases, hence I'm ruling it in or hence I'm ruling it out, which is not present in our case, o kaya, which is consistent with our patient. Going back to our example, ang ginawa kong differentials for my case, I differentiated kung otitis media ba or externa yung sa patient. After ka identify na otitis media nga siya, differentiate ko kung acute ba siya or chronic. It depends talaga on the disease kung paano mo ipapresent differentials. Now, the common question here is, ida differentials ko pa ba yung mga comorbidities na na-identify ko? Ako person, I didn't do that. I really consume a lot of time. It's really important na focus lang kayo dun sa main sakit ng patient. So, for those diagnosis, in-explain ko na lang each briefly kung bakit ko sila consider. For example, sinabi ko since our patient presented with water nasal discharge, frequent sneezing, worse when exposed to allergens, history of atopy in the family, and also the presence of pale boggy terminates on anterior rhinoscopies. Hence, our patient has allergic rhinitis. And since it does not disturb the activities of our patient, then we classify it as med intermittent. And then, intermittent kasi nga less than 4 times a week and then less than 4 weeks. With that, my complete working diagnosis is just this one. So, before I discuss my plans, I'd first like to say a bit about my diagnosis. So, first of all, I want to educate my patient about his condition. Because I believe that patient education is very important in the success of any management of any plan for the patient. So, it would definitely improve compliance. So, dito sa brief discussion ko ng diagnosis, since I already mentioned dun sa differentials ko, briefly yung DEP, magdadagdag na lang ako here a little bit about anatomy and pathophysiology. Physiology. Nagbigay lang talaga ako very briefly ng konting sobrang basic anatomy para lang matouch ko yung topic na yun. We also showed them na we don't just focus on the clinical part na meron pa rin tayo kahit pa paano knowledge dun sa basics. The ear is divided into the inner ear, the middle ear, and the external ear. In our patient, we are focusing on the middle ear as it is otitis media. And for the pathophysiology, na recurrent yung ear pain ng patient because it was chronic eventually, nagpresent siya with perforation thereby nagpresent din siya with an ear discharge as seen or appreciated by the patient. If you're preparing for your oral revalida and your revalida, you could only use the prescribed textbooks. Thank you po, probes, kasi talaga natulungan ako dahil nandun yung mga important na information na hinahanap ko. Yung mga comorbid, saan sila maging important, guys? Dun sa plans part. Kasi you don't just manage the patient's chief complaint, not just the main diagnosis, but the patient as a whole. Dapat lagi holistic yung management natin as physicians. Let's go now to plans, the prognosis, and prevention. So for the plans, I didn't really exactly know them prior to going to my oral revalida. Kaya nga sobrang-sobrang crucial ng preparation time ng oral revalida. Kumapya lang ako dun sa nakasulat sa book. Mainly clinical kasi sa talaga yung diagnosis. So, I mentioned that. Nag-emphasize na lang ako on work up for the complications. Di ba, merong discharge. Nakalimutan ko na dapat mag-bacteriologic exam. I think I also included na I would request for a CT scan. Base kasi sa probs, like yung sulit ko rin naman na in the acute phase, usually hindi naman ni-request to. But remember, in my patient, there was already mastoiditis. That's a complication. May colacetoma na rin. That's a complication. So, I wanted to be more aggressive. Since common complication nga ng chronic otitis media, may also involve the brain. Now, for the diagnostics, sinabi ko rin na I also have diagnostic plans for the patient's other comorbids. So, in this case, di ba, meron din siyang obesity. So, since her patient's 28 year old, tapos meron din siya kasi ng family history ng diabetes. So, sinabi ko na rin, even if 28 years old, I would like to work up the patient. Kasi nga, obese too na siya. Requested nun for lipid profile, FBS, and so on. Now, let's move on to the therapeutics. Kasi sabihin ko muna ano yung treatment goals for the patient. Address the pain of the patient. I want to prevent the progression or further complications. Generally, yung treatment goals naman for any condition. So, plus points yun. Just don't forget, guys, that when you explain your therapeutics, and of course, also for the rest of the plans, dapat lagi sabihin na na why. I will give the patient as if perfluxacin na otic drops because our patient already has a perforated tepanic membrane. I can give the patient oral analgesics because the patient has ear pain. Surgery-like tympano 
rhinoplasty, mastoidectomy, and so on. And of course, for the therapeutics, I also mentioned there yung plans ko for the other conditions to the patient, like yung allergic rhinitis. I would prescribe an oral antihistamine following the ARIA guidelines, a second generation antihistamine, because your patient is a jeepney driver. I wouldn't want the patient to be drowsy during the day. Tapo, syempre, in address ko rin yung obesity niya, lifestyle changes, the exercise, yung sa diet, and so on. So, hindi ko na expand in detail kung paano. Basta always, always mention those things. Kasi kahit na kung morbid sila, again, you have to address all the problems of the patient. After the diagnosis and therapeutics, disposition, and then your follow-up. Sa disposition, syempre, kailangan mo i-establish kung home, sa bahay lang patient mo, pauwiin mo siya. Kung i-admit mo siya, or sa ICU or high-risk unit, I did not need to admit my patient. And then next, for the follow-up, kung kailan mo gusto pabalikin yung patient mo after na magpa-consult sa'yo. So in this case, gusto ko siya pabalikin after one week. Let's move on now to the next key and that would be your prognosis. Doon nyo na pwede i-mention yung complications. Since otitis siya, so for the prognosis of the patient, prognosis is good. Some complications, we can have extracranial and intracranial complications. Extracranial complications like mastoiditis, which is most common and which was present in the patient, and intracranial complications such as meningitis, which is why I tried to check for signs of meningitis when I did the neurologic examination. For the last P, that would be prevention. Finally, I would like to mention to the patient my preventive plans, which are the following. Meron akong mnemonic dito, detach it. Diet, exercise, tobacco, alcohol, chemoprophylaxis, immunization, and tests. Basically, hindi ko na-explain very detailed, but ito lang yung sinusundan ko. Kailangan ba isulat ko to, isipin ko to during the preparation part? before mag-discuss. No. This is something that you should study for pa mag based on age, disease, gender. So for instance, for the diet, pwede mo rin discuss dito yung panggang Pinoy. And of course, generally, syempre, dapat i-avoid yung saturated fats, sweet, less simple sugars, more complex sugars, so things like that. Important din yung number of glasses na inunom niya per day. Tapos sa exercise, syempre, you can mention there kung ilang minutes pa dapat per day. Tapos yung maximum heart rate niya, yan yung gustong-gusto kong i-mention kasi madali lang siya i-mention. 220 minus age. For tobacco, of course, you advocate smoking cessation kung smoker yung patient. You mentioned the 5 A's, yung ask, advise, assess, assist, and arrange. Next would be alcohol, kung ilan ba yung standard drinks, tapos ilan lang ba dapat kung babae ba, di 1, tapos pag lalaki 2. For game prophylaxis, ito yung certain age groups na kunyari, kailangan na mag-aspirin, na gamot na pwede niya take based on age. And of course, dapat lagi based on the guidelines. Next, for the immunizations, na naas natin ng history kung na-vaccinate na ba for COVID, nag-yearly flu vaccines, yung makukal, depending on age, HPV, kung babae, hanggang 26 years old. If hindi pa, then you can mention that here in the preventive part. For the tests, kung yung patient mo, 50 colonoscopy, Kung 40 na babae, magmamo. Things like that. And again, inad ko yung COVID na observe the proper health protocols pa rin. So basically, ganun siya guys. So it seems long, it seems tedious to do, but with practice, you can do it. This might look scripted. Panumunumunik pa to si Mads. But for me, those are just guides. Maybe it would really help sa med school or sa revalidas. But in actual practice, as always, do your best, whatever makakabuti sa patient nyo. So that's the end of our video and I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions for your valid or for your presentations in med school, you can just message me on Instagram or on my Facebook page or you can just comment down here below. Thank you very much guys for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe to my channel.